being mindful with whoever you work with or whatever environment you are in is equally very important. Otherwise, uh, you know, the success as we say it or the growth that we want we, will never come. And we had a mantra um, which was given by our chairman. Every single situation, we used to put it in the context of is it good for the organization? Is it good for my people? Is it good for myself? That comes the last. Um, I think positivity, mindfulness, either ways, is a state of mind, right? So until and unless you are positive, you will not be able to go ahead. For me, mindfulness is the cause and positivity is usually the effect. I think positivity is for a student uh, walking into an exam hall without preparing anything and hoping to pass. I think that's positivity for a student. And mindfulness is knowing when to copy in an exam hall. Now, in the second round, I'm going to be asking some very specific questions. And um, I hope we, I, we get um, uh, some very good answers from you and straightforward answers. So coming to you, Pankil, uh, you mentioned that uh, uh, when you talked about uh, your corporate uh, Collabra and you talked about the teamwork, you talked about the number of people uh, you're working with and uh, you explained very well where the positivity, where the mindfulness you come. Now in this teamwork, uh, have you had experience of um, uh, a community uh, which we call it the LGBTQ? It's, it's a it's a long acronym I don't know how many of you all know then have the full uh, uh, the uh, uh, version of it but yes uh, uh, I, I hope you know what is LGBTQ so if, if in this team you have uh, I mean if you have had an experience that there is somebody in that team uh, which has been part of this community uh, uh, how have you managed to uh, tackle that issue? How has uh, how your experience has been when it comes to being mindful, and uh, if you can if you can throw some light on that. Absolutely. First of all, it's a non-issue um, because uh, uh, we have had you know I, I personally had great experiences working with members from LGBTQ community. Um, our Philippines operations has close to 20% uh, population of LGBTQ. Um, at the same time, uh, India, I think in India operations, we have a very little population. Um, but we have our fair share of uh, working experience with um, all, all genders, all uh, orientations and um, all uh, you know, members of the all community. So um, I, I do get sometimes uh, a lot of some feeling that, uh, you know, a lot of people still have that reservation to work with uh, you know uh, members of lgbtq i'll be honest i'll not mince my words and being positive about such things is not going to help right so i'll be real uh, there is a social stigma attached to it but uh, i think i think we are we are we're growing as a society and as an organization and a lot of other organizations i speak for uh, what i observe and uh, even when i see people working in my customers um, across india and and abroad we are specifically sticking to India right now because I know that that is what is in our context. So um, to to, on, to answer your question uh, very short, first it is not an issue uh, and uh, second is that uh, I would really want to see a lot of uh, people or encourage people and I would probably want them to reach out to me if uh, if I could be of any help. But uh, we welcome uh, any, any any members of LGBTQ and uh, would love to see them grow uh, in any any industry or um, for, for that matter working with me also. That's excellent, very good. Nice to know that. Uh, uh, Tishya, you have, uh, as we have heard from you, have have worked with uh, children, have worked with uh, different uh, children with different dis disabilities. If in your experience, uh, if, if you have come across somebody who comes from uh, uh, some, uh, person who is lesbian or a trans or queer or gay or anyone of that sort uh, how would you uh, deal with that situation what how would you handle it uh, you know how would you be mindful of that and I mean how would you be going about it if I have to deal with it 
I mean, there's no issue. He's just another individual, whether it is a male or a female or a transgender or anybody. He's just another ind- individual with his own sets of abilities and disabilities. And we work together as a team. There's no harm. I don't think there is an issue involved at all. And being a psychologist, I think uh, I am. I want the society to be more inclusive. Right, even for special children, when I talk about kids, I when I talk about people, adults with um, say anxiety, if I talk about LGBTQ, if I talk about adults with any other mental disorder, uh, the society has this tendency to just hiding it, keeping it under the covers. Why? There's no harm, whether it is a special child, an LGBTQ, anxiety, schizophrenia, anything for that matter. So I don't understand where is the issue. So I don't think we we work as a team. We all have our own sets of abilities and disabilities, and uh, we should make the best use of whatever we have and develop the skills we don't. And that's my take on it. I think I'm very open that way. Very good. Thank you. Yeah, I, yeah please. Yeah. Just want to add something. Uh, so and it is just not in the context of uh, LGBTQ. Uh, whenever the question comes about uh, accepting somebody who you are not accustomed with, right? It could be different language, different religion, different orientation, different gender. The the fact is that it's a reality. None of these people are going nowhere. It is up to you or us if you accept, work with them, and make a happy environment for everybody. Otherwise, the issue will continue to go on, and there is always going to. You'll find always somebody unhappy out there somewhere. So you know, bottom line is that we have to work together, and there is no option to not work together and things like that. I'll just add, like, if you're talking about the corporate culture, if you want efficiency, you have to accept. You have to accept every every individual that comes to you, right? and that's the only way you can uh, get productivity today uh, in my organization and please don't quote me anywhere else or the guys are going to uh, you know get behind me but then uh, jokes apart uh, we have close to 47% of female population in our organization and uh, they do about over a 60% performance so gone are those days when you know we could say that x individual x gender x religion x uh, orientation is good or bad for the organization right so uh, all it takes is somebody to have a very serious approach to a situation and and the commitment that we need and uh, you know you you have a star performer or an employee or a friend in 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 them so you know accepting them is not just Uh, a right thing to do but it's a need of the hour also yeah yeah please <laughs> this is again uh, not a male female thing but i feel that um, females are much more mindful and i think that is the reason why they are performing better because they don't just switch off like that or they don't, they don't lose their temper just like that so i think that is one reason why this could be happening very good mike more again Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. No problem. Thank you. It was it was a really good conversation. I I am very happy that you could both engage yourself and talk about that. So, uh, uh, Rishi Kesh, uh, you just heard what Pankaj yeah, said. It was yeah. what Tisha said. Yeah. Uh, can you, uh, uh, in the same context, uh, talk something about if you have uh, to say anything about the LGBT community or uh, anything? Uh, Uh, not just that but any other thing which which in relation to what you are doing or you know uh, if you have to share some experience um yeah. well again like uh, with isha it's a non issue we should be accepting of everyone in fact if you come across bigots who have a problem with it so if if for example i have a problem with someone who's from the lgbt com- community it's actually a reflection on me it's not there's nothing wrong with the person in front in fact when you come across anyone who has any kind of um, you know a different identity and you are bothered by that identity it is a reflection on you it's about how you think uh, rather than anything that's wrong with the other person and when it comes to the field of arts 
it's encourage be who you are express yourself art is all about self expression right uh, so um, when it comes to the arts every kind of identity is accepted promoted go for it you have to you do you right so that's our <laughs> motto when it comes to that because um, you only make good art when you are connected with yourself you have to be accepted for who you are but yes i do have friends who have had uh, issues in acceptance and uh, non acceptance from people who who you hold in high regard and who you are supposed who are supposed to support you when they don't accept you it breaks them it, it breaks their heart it's 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 very difficult on them and uh, i have a lot of friends who who are have gone through that are going through it and just, you can just be there for them support them you know give them the support that they need and uh, just hope that like uh, he said that overall as a society we are evolving we'll catch up but you keep supporting everyone and yeah self expression very good you any one of you need to want to add anything to what he said just to elaborate on the point of uh, evolving satya ki paribhasha according to me changes every generation i know when yeah. my parents were getting married they there used to be honor killing in the name of you no know, casteism right when i grew up uh, there was no problem you know you can do a uh, intercaste marriage right uh, now we see a very good or Yeah, it's a debatable subject, but then there is a there is a, a more or less in an educated class and urban societies there is a acceptance in inter-religion marriages, right? I think it is very safe to say when my daughter grows up to be an adult, the truth will change. That is where they will realize that you know what, you know any orientation is perfectly fine and it is there is nothing wrong with it, right? So we are just like you said, evol- ev- evolution is going on. we are just a little bit slower than the western countries but then we'll get there yeah and i'll also add um, when you said support so ultimately support from parents and that comes back to say positivity and mindfulness you know the more you are positive that and you are more accepting of the situation right any situation that you are facing whether it is lgbtq or whether it is any other डिसऑर्डर और एनी सिंपल सिचुएशन की खाने में क्या बनाना है लाइक एज बेसिक एज दैट इफ यू आर एक्सेप्टिंग आई थिंक मोस्ट ऑफ योर प्रॉब्लम आर एज इट इज सॉल्व एंड यू आर सपोर्टिंग सो सपोर्ट एंड पॉजिटिविटी आई मीन इफ यू पॉजिटिव यू विल बी एबल टू सपोर्ट इजिली वेरी गुड सो यू कम टू यू नाउ अर्जुन यू आर अ स्टूडेंट एंड what according to you are we uh, the, the same context we are talking if you can throw some light um, and share something um, what what would you like to say about this i absolutely don't see the problem if someone belongs from the lgbtq community uh, community i'm so sorry because i am coming from a generation where people have accepted this i have friends i have i have people who have worked with who are who are in the lgbtq community community and they are doing very well i look up to them their confidence everything so i don't see what the problem is it's that individuals identity uh, and how can someone expect to change expect that person to change his or her identity when you can't even change your mentality that's a that's something that we should think about because we are asking them to change according to the societal norms but what are the societal norms something that we made up right something that we made up first it was first it was male domination we accepted the females now when when it's males and females now it's lgbtq and something will keep happening something will keep coming and we need to be more accepting and i think we are going there as sir said very rightfully we are going there we need to support them and we will support them we are supporting them okay. very good yeah um tisha you want to add to something uh why do we need to support i'll ask why i'm saying support is needed by somebody who where there is a problem this is not a problem so why support we are all one community why why label that this is 
the LGBTQ community, community or this is not the LGBTQ community. We are all one. So I think when you're talking about supporting the community, I feel it is supporting each other. I mean, a better way to present it, I think, a better way to accept is that support each, each and every one. In this case, supporting the community also means calling out bigotry where bigotry is involved. That is also a form of support, not just directly helping the people, but actively calling out uh, bigotry like and, and just having conversations. So, uh, like you, if you have grandparents who are conservative in that sense, who you know will be like, uh, oh, gay marriage should not be done, sit, sit and have a conversation with them, try to change their mind. See, hey, this is where society is headed. So I guess it's that kind of uh, support as well. Yeah, support means basically accepting them, not making them feel out of this group or out of this room. Accepting them and I guess we have to support them as Sir said because our society is in is trapped in that thinking that maybe this is not normal. We can't say that everyone in, our, in the society thinks that this is acceptable. And that is why I think they require support. Any oppressed group of people in the society they need some kind of support to come up yeah we can trust the process we can trust the time that the people are taking this time duration to accept these people but if we support them i feel that it accelerates the process of acceptance of of involving them in the society in anything that any normal individual any straight person is expected to do right I think that is the primary reason, right? We are all rational people out here. Uh, we agree with each other and it is very easy and fair to say that, you know what, we all agree to it. But to be honest, there is a problem. And, and like you just said, you know, it has to be called out. And I truly believe that it, the bad doesn't happen because there are too many bad people. It happens because good people don't do anything about it, right? So if, if we say something like this where we agree to a point where you know uh, we want to encourage that you better be ready to do something about it i am not asking anyone to go out on roads and support with banners no what i'm trying to say is whatever environment that you are in you know whatever society that you live in uh, whatever company that you work in you know if if something like this comes to your notice you cannot stay quiet about it if we only start doing that you know the overall goal is achieved you know and you can probably influence one or two of your best friends who agree with you but they will not take a step just ask them to take a step so you know what i am with you if it is in your organization i will come with you let's talk to your hr or you know let's talk to your uh, organization let's talk to your school or whoever it is but make sure that you address it in support and make sure that you are standing shoulder to shoulder otherwise Whatever we say will not make sense unless you take an action to support it. Yeah, very true. In fact, uh, you raised a very valid point, you know, that uh, we will talk a little bit in Hindi. We will be talking to each other. We can't do anything in the world. We have to say that we have to break the world in the world. तो चुप वो चुप्पी तोड़ेंगे अगर हम उस मुद्दे पर हम बात करेंगे तो लोगों को ये ये चीज समझ में आएगी लोग इसकी ऊपर चर्चा होगी और धीरे-धीरे करके हम बदलाव देख सकते हैं मैं मतलब मैं मेरी खुद की बात करता हूँ मैं जब मैंने मेरे मेरी समलैंगिकता के बारे में बाहर बात की तो उस वक्त लोगों को कुछ इस बहुत नफरत थी लोगों को मेरे तरफ यू नो मेरे पुतले जलाए गए क्या क्या नहीं हुआ मेरे साथ में लेकिन मैंने इतना ही कहा कि मैं उन लोगों को दोषी नहीं ठहराता हूं जिन्होंने मेरे खिलाफ जो भी किया है या जो भी आवाज उठाई है मैं उनकी अज्ञानता को दोषी ठहराता हूं आई ब्लेम द इग्नोरेंस और मेरा कर्तव्य है कि मैं उन लोगों को एजुकेट करूं उन लोगों को अवेयर करूं कि ये क्या है और ये ये क्यों है और आज आज की तारीख में मैं बहुत गर्व के साथ कह सकता हूँ कि जिन लोगों ने मेरे पुतले जलाए हैं वही लोग आज मुझे वर्शिप करते हैं 
<laughs> so you see see the change you know education se itna itna farak padta hai ki log log jagrat ho gaye we have we have become mindful now agar hum hum wapas apne mindfulness ka is pe aa rahe mudde pe aa rahe ki to ye aapne bahut sahi bataya ki you know the you have to speak you have to speak out for any issue is this is just one example i mean i'm sure you you all will be able to give some more examples about where you know where uh, if you are vocal about yourself you are able to um, you know uh, uh, change make change happen and and make change happen for for the positive uh, arjun um, i would like you to say something uh, no absolutely agreed sir uh, 100% respect to you because when a single person can change so many people's perspective about something that is so natural that is when you know that you are making a change in this society and that is what we are trying to do when you say we are being positive when you say we are being mindful you know we can talk at a individual level but what about the society level you know what if we start cultivating this this uh, this behavior among us where we have to be mindful where we have to be accepting where we have to be positive about the future about the present and if we keep holding on to the past the mistakes in the past then we will never grow right so it is always about growing it's always about improving it's always about pushing pushing the boundaries you know the society can say that you have to stop here you have to limit yourself here doesn't mean you have to the the the, the moment you stop listening to the society that is when people like him are you know are made thanks yeah uh, rishikesh you wanted to you were you were going to say something well uh, i would just say that um, yes as a society we do need to grow but when we are specifically like if we talk about uh, mindfulness uh, and positivity i would like to say that from my point of view i think everyone first needs to change on an individual level only then can society change because uh, w- what has happened is you're you're talking about uh, holding on to the baggage of the past the thing is all of us are doing it at an individual level first and that is why collectively as a society we then have that confirmation bias where then everyone is doing it so which is where according to me uh, mindfulness really plays a huge factor is you first have to be extremely mindful or use mindfulness as a tool to first find that um okay so to to give you an analogy of it uh, um when when they uh, you know when they transport when they used to transport log back in the days they would push it down the river so you would have these logs floating down the river and sometimes there would be a jam and usually there was one log which would jam up the whole river and that was called the key log in our minds we all have that one key log which jams all our thoughts so mindfulness is the one tool that you can use and and it's a skill you have to develop over time it's a it's a thing you have to practice and do but you get better at it and mindfulness can really release that key log and help you to address those fundamental uh, hang ups in your um, psyche or character or your personality and i think that when compounded in with many people is when society changes i think for the better that is my take on it i absolutely agree with you uh, change at individual level is always required to bring a change in the society i absolutely agree and mindfulness needs to be a deliberate activity now without uh, even without practicing it there are situations where we can be mindful but when you start practicing it that is the moment you start bringing the change and absolutely i agree the change has to be brought at an individual level and then only the society can change because okay. i'm sure you would have come across uh, like some of your friends or people you know in life who are literally sleep walking through life you know uh, reacting to patterns reacting like koi bhi situation ho reaction same hota hai so it's like dude can't you see the situation is different every time but no they have the same reaction because the situation changes they don't change so i think mindfulness can break that pattern for you get you out of your own loops that you have in life i think the only thing is that we need to accept as individuals as a society mindfulness yes is a way to do that is that change is inevitable that is the only constant that is there what else remains tell me nothing 
so through mindfulness yes we can accept it and start uh, reacting or maybe uh, expressing ourselves in a better way uh, when we are practicing uh, mindfulness uh, pankil would you like to add something i want to uh, give you an example of a situation uh, where i would want to point out where uh, we have I, i see positivity and where i see mindfulness so i have been working with a lot of ngos over past couple of years um largely from education standpoint for the underprivileged and orphans and um, there came a point where i was um, i had a realization where uh, somebody you know talked his how hard with me now this guy was an administrator uh, he used to administer our funds uh, making sure they are connected they are they're going to the right place we are paying to the institution versus you know the individual so all that was going on and uh, while i was thinking that you know i am doing something good for the society uh, one day it hit me because he told me that you know what everyone opens a checkbook you know you're not doing something out of this world of course i appreciate it but then if you think that you have done your part then you have not and i i was surprised and i asked him why why do you say this and he said that you know what you come from a background you come from a family where you knew that you know you being an engineer or a doctor or a net whatever you know you can be that why because you were equipped with uh, uh, you know education you had an access to uh, a lot of things which these kids don't then i said but yeah but i'm we are trying to provide that to this kid and he said yes but the most essential thing is missing and you know what is that and i was like what and he was like mentorship what happens to these kids is they go back to that you know substandard living environment that they come from right because of not none of their fault and for them somebody they look up to somebody called a sanju driver no offense to any profession i'm just trying what i'm trying to say is that the potential of that kid was here and he or she is just targeting to be here just because they don't have an access to that information that they can do better and that's where we started and and that you know it hit me that you know what is whatever whatever we have been doing so far is not good enough and that's when and he said that you know what don't try to do it for 100 people go target two such individuals who are good at their academics and we are working on such couple of people and it's a beautiful thing to see because now we have tried to make them as our family members we have given them access to our homes we have tried to bring them to our offices show them that what the real world could be what their future can be like and they are shaping up point is that you know while you are positive when you do something if you are not mindful about it then the situations are not going to change they will of course you can tell yourself that it is a good thing to do yes you wrote a check it is good thing to do but then and your intentions were positive but you cannot bring that change in the society that we guys were talking about it will only change if you you know roll up your sleeve and do something about it. so i think we have just uh, the last uh, few minutes left so i would like each of you to just um, share some closing remarks um, based on what we have uh, spoken so far um, uh, pankil we would like to begin with you I think it was a great discussion. Uh, after a long time, I had a, a, a very robust, um, you know, view from individuals coming from very different backgrounds, and it was very interesting. Um, I think uh, I, I hope that um, people in the audience also got a lot of valuable inputs. Uh, a lot of it we usually know, but a lot of reiteration kind of brings it together for us. so i'm glad to be here uh, and i hope everybody enjoyed um, this evening yeah first of all i would like to thank pi factory i would like to thank you sir for having all of us over and yes like pankal just said uh, that you know it was from various different backgrounds all of us interacting on stage off stage was definitely very enlightening and as a psychologist i would just like to end this thing uh, this talk by just uh, urging people to start practicing mindfulness and how do you do that basic just at that moment when you are anxious or you are not at it just sit down 
be peaceful watch your breath just do that basically just watch your breath and by watching your breath i will i'm i mean that uh, know that you're taking breath in and you're getting it out you know just doing that for 5 seconds will get you back on track thank you so much yeah um so again okay. thank you everyone for being here it's very important to have these discussions and in this in the time that we are in right now i think we need mindfulness and positivity more than ever because there's a lot of confusion there's a lot of chaos and it's very important that all of us individually stay centered we stay centered in our lives we don't take out our insecurities on others least of all those who are close to us and pandemic mein who everyone was pushed together so there were things that were spilled like things got spilled over and all but take it slow take it easy like she said watch your breath because that brings you back into this moment this moment is all there is there is nothing else the past is done future is not here present hai just breathe bring yourself back the solution will come to you you have all the tools you need to deal with the situation you just have to find it within you so that's my take away be patient is what i'll be say patient. be patient Absolutely. and accept uh okay first of all i'm very grateful uh, for this opportunity uh a great discussion on stage off stage as ma'am said uh and i believe positivity and mindfulness is something that we can't define or we can't even cover it in one discussion it's something we have to practice it's something we have to discuss among us you know the the interpersonal discussions need to take place about the importance of positivity and mindfulness and as sir said uh, we are living in a uh, very uh, dynamic times we don't know uh, what the future holds for us we just need to be positive we just need to be optimistic and we need to be mindful about our future and do the best that we can right thank you so i think we had a kind of a good combination of lot of uh, uh, backgrounds from the from an industrial point of view corporate point of view from a a professional uh, psychologist hypnotherapist uh, musician uh, an engineer turned musician <laughs> i would say and uh, um, a student uh, who who has now to to venture into uh, the life and like you know choose a career and you know become something so i think uh, it was a it was a with uh, the 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 pi talks organizers they really chose a good team to uh, uh to get uh, i think all of us together to have this healthy discussion and i think uh, uh perhaps uh this is perhaps one of the first talk shows which has uh, brought in the element of the lgbt community uh, in a in a theme where which is talking about growth and which is talking about positivity and which is talking about mindfulness so i i would like to uh, thank the uh, organizers for bringing this uh, element in so that this also uh, creates awareness and uh, uh, it kind of uh, we try to be mindful of uh, uh, this uh, issue as well as uh, we try to see how we could be more positive so thank you again the team uh, for uh, for coming in i believe there is a uh, question answer the session uh, with uh, available with us so audience feel free to uh, ask uh, questions to any on of on the panel or any one of us we would love to um, have you um, answer uh, we would love to answer your questions i'm siraj so since we have been talking about the lgbtq community i wanted to discuss with you guys or uh, the rest of the people in the room about a certain development that has been happening in this uh, field as regarding the reservation that's been planned out for the trans community and even though the government is planning to break them under a particular category and give them all a similar reservation uh, trans activists like grace one who has been raising uh, fighting for a horizontal reservation so i would like to uh, like you guys to talk about it or maybe give your thoughts about it to uh if you all have anything okay uh, can i ask uh, silvi Uh, to to uh, to ask this, we have somebody who is a trans activist here, 
uh, Sylvie, who is also board of uh, on the board of uh, Lakshya Trust and the co-founder of Lakshya Trust, maybe Sylvie would be able to uh, assist to this uh, answer. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Sylvie, Sylvie Merchant. Uh, I also go by the name of Sylvester. So. <clears throat> I'm kind of aware about the reservations which have been kind of talked about, but frankly speaking, uh, if you can just also elaborate about the the vertical thing which you're talking about, and then maybe I'll have to. Basically, what the government is planning is to give the entire trans community reservation as per the OBC category. But what the activists are fighting for is a horizontal reservation which categorizes them as per their caste that they belong to. So they are asking for horizontal reservation instead of putting them all under a similar category because everybody comes from a different background. So accordingly, they have their own problems because of the uh, background that they come from. Okay, so I think it well, logically it makes sense because you know, what we're looking at is not very uniform kind of people if you look even within the LGBTQI communities and even within the trans communities also because trans is an umbrella okay uh, male to female female to male there are kind of a lot of uh, identities otherwise also one uh, thing we, we really need to acknowledge is the intersectionalities which we all come from basically so a person uh, maybe <coughs> uh, you know would be Adivasi or could be a Dalit and a trans or a trans woman or a trans man. So uh, I think our take, but I would actually support what she is actually talking about because that celebrates uh, the intersectionalities which are already very much there within the communities and once again not kind of you know labeling the whole group as a herd thing and you know uh, you know uh, uh, all trans are kind of equal because you know uh, the realities of um, <laughs> uh, let me put uh, in a more cruder way is um, uh, 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 Grace Banu or maybe Sylvie Merchant who has a Christian background or a semi-tribal background would be very very different from uh, Lakshmi Narayan Tripathi who is a Brahmin for that matter. I don't want to kind of you know uh, uh, take that this 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 is now actually going into the political this thing I, I really don't want to kind of uh, drag that on to that political level but uh, I would say, I think anything which is celebrating uh, intersectionalities, uh, 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 because we are inherently, though we we, we fall in, in, in one uh, group in that sense, if, uh, uh, so to speak, a group, uh, but we, we come from diverse backgrounds and diversity itself in itself, that is our strength and beauty. So if, I, I don't know whether I'm answering you, but you know, that's what my take is on about. More than so. an answer, answer, I was actually looking for a discussion, so like. Okay, so, so this is my take on this. If you have any, we can discuss, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm happy with your answer. Uh, I'm a student of psychology and a part of LGBTQ community too. So I come across lots of people and lots of folks who are dealing with stigma, discrimination and mental health disturbances. They come to me related to their sexuality, their orientation. I do give talks to them like I do that we do discuss but at the end of the day I, I, can, I cannot come to the conclusion that what should I tell to them and like so yeah I wanted to know that oh, how can I conclude the discussion and how can I come to the conclusion? I think I'm going to be repeating myself like the entire discussion that uh, if you're talking to other uh, individuals from the LGBTQ community and as a psychology student when you're talking to them first you ask them to accept themselves right one the moment you accept your own self your own orientation, your own flaws, your own abilities, your disabilities. I think you're you're sorted. Yeah, we do discuss these things, and yeah, I suggest them to accept themselves first. But at the end of the day, they'll come again, and they'll, uh, and the other day they'll will discuss the same thing. That is called uh, a good listener. 
everybody has uh, you know issues going on in their life right and uh, we tend to lean on to somebody who can listen to our problems they sometimes may not even be looking for solution you know they just want to come and vent out with you you could be a good listener to those friends of yours right your role is probably not and if a friend tells you that he or she is looking for that solution they will tell you but don't feel obligated to you know give that solution to them and don't it's not your burden to carry right you should not feel you should be happy that people share with you you are approachable okay that is one two usually when you talk to individuals your friends they are open about everything with you and when you ask them simply at the end that what would you wish instead of this what would you wish and they will tell you that answer they know the answer almost everyone knows the answer of their in you know, a problem whether it is achievable or not that's a different story right but they will point that out and then if you have a solution try and work with that individual on that level they're okay let's say for an example i am not able to convince you know family member then you ask them that how do you think they will get convinced maybe this family member can help that family member to understand okay i will come with you talk to him they will talk to them i'm just giving you a vague example but i think you get the point what i'm trying to tell you is that when you are a good listener sometimes it is not for you to give solution try to talk more discuss more and try to find a solution for however long it may take if it's your good friend i think as friends we are all obligated to do that bare minimum for our friends i just add on add on to this like he said being a psychologist your job is definitely to listen number 1 right number 2 explore different ways of uh, therapy in terms of uh, maybe uh, self awareness so something that so explore different ways of self awareness and that will help your friends so you can use art therapy you can use cbt you can use rebt you can use person centric use ther- look for ways how that person will actually become more self aware of the issue and then comes accepting so move from just listening and then when you're what when you want to help explore these therapies as a psychology student or a budding psychologist and that will definitely help them hello everyone this is nehal i am from sikhaba i'm just visiting here um so i've been in i I'm studying my pharmacy school but I'm completing my pharmacy school right now. So during my pharmacy school I had like two different events with the street people. I'm from LGBT community too. So whether it, I would consider that as a miscommunication from my end and from the other person. So they, the way they kind of approached me like I felt that they were just approaching me to go on a date. So I literally went on a date. I was busy with the that they were just doing it. But then later on, they continue with that continuum of like misleading me into the relation of it. And then later on, when I tried explaining the situation, I people have started labeling me as straight chaser, like in a certain terms of it. So I feel like this is goes to like like I'm this I'm just making this point for the self awareness. I feel like I never felt that um, in India. Like every time I come. Um, Come to India. I feel like even though we are so conservative here, I feel like I feel like more welcome into the LGBT community here than more in the West. I feel like even talking to the people in the West, I feel they have labeled me as straight chasers and everything. I feel like it, it's any time something happens, I feel like it's a two-way street of something. So I feel like if there was any miscommunication from my end, there has to be miscommunication from the other end too. So I feel like going uh, going. So leading the question to my manager, have you come across a situation like that, or or if you have not, so how would you have, how would you deal with it, and how would you have dealt with it if you have come across? Uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, I love talking to homophobic people. <laughs> I I it, I learn a lot from them. You know, I mean, uh, actually learn uh, learn a lot. I mean. Uh, it's it's so boring to talk to people who already know about it you know it's it's like you know you are already aware so it's i, I say it's usme maza nahi hai na so mujhe acha lagta hai jo log main to dhoondta hu you know i try to pick 
पिक एंड चूज अगर मेरे मेरे पास में एक ऑडियंस है उसमें से Uh, ऐसे लोग मिलेंगे ना कि जो होमोफोबिक हैं जो हमको नफरत करते हैं तो मुझे अच्छा आई लाइक like, मैं तो उनको पिक करके मैं बोलूँगा चलो बात करो मेरे साथ में नो तो uh, मैंने एक चीज़ देखी है कि uh, हिंदी समझ में आती है yeah, okay. हाँ तो uh, म- मैंने एक चीज़ देखी है कि अगर हम उन लोगों को उनकी भाषा में बात करें तो उनको ज़्यादा अच्छे समझ में आता है नो टॉक टॉक द लैंग्वेज और ये चीज़ मुझे एक बहुत सीनियर uh, ऑफिसर थे हैं अभी भी हैं इस फ्रॉम द यूनाइटेड नेशंस में यूएन में गया था तो उन्होंने ही मुझे चीज़ बताई थी कि टॉक द लैंग्वेज ऑफ द पर्सन उसको अब उसकी भाषा में समझाओ यू नो सो अगर कोई बंदा आपसे ऐसा बोल रहा है ना तो उसको उसकी उसकी भाषा में भाषा में मतलब आयरन से इंग्लिश हिंदी मराठी गुजराती पर उसके उसकी भाषा में कि मतलब वो किस कम्युनिकेशन uh, से वो uh, वाकिफ है तो तो वो बंदे को मतलब अच्छे से उतर जाएगा समझ जाएगा यू नो और फिर वो उसके बाद वो वो बोलेगा ही नहीं कुछ आगे मेरे ऐसे अभी तो खैर वक्त नहीं है इफ आई मीट यू समाइम्स इंडिविजुअली आई आई ट्रेन यू कप ट्रेन यू हाउ टू टॉक टू पीपल एंड हाउ टू चेंज देयर माइंड सेट एंड हाउ टू चेंज देयर परसेप्शन ऑन थिंग्स I agree with that totally. But um, what, so I'd like to have a view from you, ma'am, as well too. How to deal with that situation as well too. Um, so when I had that situation, I won't go much into detail of it. But I will just say that let's say if some straight guy come and ask you in a way, okay, like um, and like would something like try, let's say I'll say like very straight and upfront would grind you in a straight club. What would you think of that person? And would and at the end, that straight guy was like, no, 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 like you are, uh, you are. So the whole group of people, along with that, they are like, no, you are gay because you are gay. It is your fault, not not his fault. So how would you have dealt with that? I think walk away from the situation because it is not your responsibility to change the other person's mindset all the time, right? it is their problem that they are not understanding it's not yours so walk away from that situation and yes all of us are doing our bit to create the awareness the support system the uh, to to improve the the situation that there is but in a situation like you just mentioned i think just walking away from that situation will help you yeah i definitely walked away but i feel like uh, i was just constantly like that really like holding on to this point and making the point educating people but i feel like in the west it's really harder for me to carry their mind than over here so i'm like very glad that our country is like even it's conservative like people are very self aware of the situation still they more than west is the mass we consider west is like very open minded but i feel like india is way more forward than our west actually i feel india believes in community and uh, the western culture is more individualistic and that also makes a difference uh hey everyone i'm himan um so this question i guess uh, would be for all of you guys uh not just the people on the stage it could be anyone but this thing that i have noticed and this is a very interesting point that uh, especially um, Trisha man has raised that we should be accepting uh, and uh, you know mostly half the problem is solved right there and also like when something is affecting us we should like remove ourselves from the situation especially so when you know we did not do anything to deserve that Yeah, the, right now I'm also quoting sir because quoting that incident that you told told all of us about this. So my question would be in this context uh, is what about something that we did not do to deserve it and also we are the ones who are going to be you know be affected the most by it and this is a problem with does not affect just one community in particular like lgbtq or anything else right so how would i deal and just accept that um let's say a topic about climate change 
mostly right now most of us students here we are not in a position to make a direct change right now okay we are students we cannot even vote for our representatives who could be able to make that change or anything so how would how do i just accept and just move on with it like half the global warming is not going to be solved by that right and <laughs> if i just walk away and accept from it but the question is and i'm sorry for digressing too much but the question is what do i do with that uh, information in mind like the whole world is going to be affected not just us as a community or as a country or anything so do your bit you are do, do your bit you know and uh, slowly you will definitely see the change and sir is definitely one person who will say, believe and agree with me i hope that one if you do your bit you will definitely see a change in the near future i think how you should approach this situation is that um, whatever you want to do or bring as a change you should start doing it very rightly pointed out do your bit number 1 before we preach to anyone else we should be practicing it right two find out groups there are various groups out there who are like minded who would accommodate you for you know the same common cause try and find those groups i am sure you will find them join them try to bring that cohesive environment right contribute in it and then you will be able to influence other people also you will be much more confident because now you are working with a bunch of individuals with the same a uh, purpose or a common goal right so start from that i know what you are saying i know it's not easy to bring about any change but you know you have to like we discussed today you have to be positive about it you have to get in the in the company of those people who are like minded and then start building that community also so you know let's say there are i'm sure there are a lot of groups who want to you know fight for uh, you know climate change be a part of them active member of them give time give their energy you know and then you know start influencing others because you will go stronger in your purpose in the in that journey right so take it step by step but be focused and perceive it actually uh, i would like to add to that so um uh, i believe my uh, but like do i how do i deal with uh, how do i try to be positive and mindful about the issue that like questions my whole future of existence that's uh, that's what i actually meant to ask so since our talk here is about positivity and mindfulness check uh, part of your negativity negativity would stem from the fact that you have already assumed a future which has not yet happened or which is yet to come i know we are heading a certain way and things don't look good for us right now but uh, i mean human beings have found a way so far we are an innovative species we are the only species that have managed to dig ourselves out of holes that we create um so i i guess a healthy amount of optimism for the future is much needed because if you are already going to live because if you live your if you live today based on a future that has not happened that you have assumed you are also going to waste today that you you could have spent doing something about the future right um and accept things you cannot change uh change what you can but don't don't get attached to things that have not happened yet um it may seem that we are heading a certain way but things change all the time faith comes into play somewhere because uh in some things in life i mean i know faith is a whole different ball game altogether but somewhere you have to you just have to have faith in certain things um uh, uh i like to have faith that like i i honestly like i am worried about climate change but i believe that humans are resourceful enough as a species that we will band together and hopefully deal with the uh, situation it's a faith that i use to make sure that i can still function today
if that makes sense yeah kind of so, yeah. something i always tell uh, my clients you know when when a, with a similar uh, when they come up with similar issues is don't fear the unknown don't fear the unknown you don't know what if 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 you're talking about climate change what if it all gets better why do you why are you fearing the unknown whether it is positive or negative right so work on that and uh, i think you will be good to go sure um yes it's a process maybe i would describe it as being the most selfish person about that like <laughs> no in the sense that um people are selfish when they think about themselves their own single self and if you worry about like 8 billion people who exist maybe you are like 8 billion times more selfish about it <laughs> um yeah so i try to embrace it <laughs> um why are you thinking just because you are a student you can't bring a change every change doesn't need to be on a large scale as sir and ma'am rightfully said you join the people who are already fighting for that change or you be the change yourself as simple as that every great change every great decision that has taken place in this world that started from one individual it was never like it 2 bill, billion people believed in climate change there was someone who noticed climate change there was someone who saw that the world is changing and that is why a global recognition came to this crisis now when it comes to change i know it uh, uh, it feels ki what can we do we are just a student i know that feeling but if you can even change one person's attitude towards climate change then it is worth it but please don't think that you can't do anything just because you are a student half of the uh, half of optimism or half of positivity will come right there when you think you can do something about it सपनों की परछाइया तोड़ रही है नाता कैसे बताए कैसे छुपाए टूटे हैं क्यों अर मादल के बीते पलों को भी जाए चाहे वो क्यों अपना हौसला
पंछियों से पानी से हवाओं से सीखा है रुकना नहीं थमना नहीं रोना नहीं पाना है मुझको खोना नहीं बाहे बसारे खुशियां बटोरे जीले तू ये जिंदगी ओ हौसला